Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Fjall Raven Alvo backpack, which is a really interesting 30 liter all purpose bag. On the channel in the past, we've looked at a few different options from Fjall Raven, such as their Raven 28 and 20 backpacks. I was a big fan of the aesthetic and the build quality on those bags, so I was excited to have a chance to check out the Alvo backpack, which has actually been requested a few times in the past. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience testing it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out walk through all the features that it has, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. The style here is fairly outdoorsy. You do have some straps and attachment points, but it's not overly technical. I like that the bag still maintains a fairly minimal appearance that's gonna allow it to blend in well into a lot of different environments, whether you're taking this in the office, walking around the city, exploring the outdoors, or even traveling. And it is offered in two different colors. The version that I have here is the black version, but they also have a blue version, which looks really nice. And then moving into the materials, the bag is made out of Fjall Raven's Bergshell fabric, which is a recycled 400D nylon that feels like it's going to hold up pretty well to rougher usage. It's also fairly lightweight and it seems to offer a good amount of weather resistance. And the bag also has some nice YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side of the bag. These seem to offer a decent amount of space. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I normally like to carry with me, it fit in there pretty comfortably. The pockets also have a nice amount of elasticity, so if you happen to have a thicker water bottle, you should be able to fit in there comfortably. I did notice that the pockets are slightly shallow if you tend to carry a taller water bottle and they're also a little bit loose so I noticed that my water bottle could tend to slip out of the pocket accidentally when I place the bag down as I have it now so that's something that you want to keep in mind but still nice to have the flexibility that these offer they hug the bag pretty well when they're not in use then you also have compression straps on each side of the bag which I always like to have paired with a water bottle pocket so if I want to store my tripod I can secure it here could also use these to hang something like a jacket or to just to compress the bag down when I'm not having it as full. And then on the front of the bag, you have a few attachment points, which are gonna be great for securing additional items to the bag. This one at the bottom might be used for something like a bike light. You can also attach other accessories with something like a carabiner, maybe some hand sanitizer. And while we're on the front of the bag, one thing that I did wanna call out is that the logo is a little bit prominent for my particular preferences. This is just something that I don't like to have on some of these bags that are so minimal as to have this bright logo here on the front. So I wish that that had been a little bit more subtle or even moved down to the bottom like the Fjall Raven. Raven has kind of the leather logo that's a little bit less prominent. So just a little bit of nitpick there, but I did want to call it out. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 30 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and I still had plenty of leftover space. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it still maintains a fairly slim silhouette and hugged my back nicely, which made it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying onto most domestic or international airlines. Taking a look at the straps on the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I really like how the straps have been implemented here. They have plenty of padding. They're broken in right out of the box. And on the inside, you have a breathable mesh material to help prevent moisture from building up. I also like that these straps have a decent width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. And then on the straps, you also have some attachment points here. You can maybe rest your sunglasses or attach a light or something like that. And then you also have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. This has a pretty interesting clip system. I hadn't seen this before. It has this hook that kind of comes underneath and then you clip that in and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but overall it has worked pretty well. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been pretty comfortable. There's plenty of padding here. It has the same breathable material that we saw on the straps. And this is a big improvement over some of the other Fjall Raven bags that I've used, such as the Raven 28, which just has more of a kind of fabric and flat backing. So it tended to make my back very sweaty. I like that here you have the breathable material and there's also some air channels and elevation to help provide a little bit more airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. And then one last note while we're on the back paneling is that the bag also includes a removable waist belt. 
that you can use to stabilize the bag when you're wearing it while riding a bike or just walking around. It just kind of keeps it in place. This doesn't add a ton of support. I personally always like to remove this type of waist strap, so I'm glad that it's fully removable. It's not something that you have to tuck away, but it's also nice that it's included if you prefer to have that extra bit of stabilization and support. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty simple. There's really not a ton of pocketing, especially on the exterior. Near the water bottle pocket, you have one simple zippered compartment here, which is gonna be a good spot for any smaller items that you need to reach a little bit more regularly. So maybe this would be a good spot for your phone or a little notebook, your passport. I currently have a field notes in here just to kind of show off the size. It is a little bit exposed, so maybe a passport might be slightly susceptible to pickpockets, but again, just for smaller, flatter items, maybe a smaller power bank. In general, though, I try not to use these types of pockets too much as I prefer to leave the volume for a water bottle that I might be carrying. And then at the top, you have a pretty large quick access pocket. I'm always a fan of these type of pockets near the top of the bags. They're just very easy to access. You have a pretty well protected zipper here. It kind of comes over to cover it, to protect it from the elements. And on the inside, a pretty simple, large amount of space. I like that it has this brighter lining to make it a little bit easier to see into the compartment and grab what you need. This is gonna be a good spot for those bulkier items that you need to grab a little bit more quickly during the day. So diving in, I currently have my sunglasses with their case. I also have my GoPro. And then I tossed in this little ghost well pouch from Tom Ben that has some of these smaller tech and EDC items that I normally have with me. Moving into the main compartment, this is a top loading bag. So you have this zipper that comes around and still provides you a pretty nice wide opening so you can grab whatever you need. You can't see all the way down into the bottom necessarily, but I really love just having this bucket of space where I could stuff things in very easily. And again, with the bright lining, it still makes it a little bit more manageable, even though it is a deep compartment. Before diving into this main area, I did wanna call out that you have a few zippered compartments on the flap of the bag. So it's nice to have that organization for smaller items that you don't want getting lost in the larger volume. And so starting off with this first zipper compartment, I like that it has this meshy material to allow you to see what's on the inside. And it doesn't have a ton of volume. This isn't super flexible, but it's enough to hold the types of items that I would normally like to carry. So in this one, I just have a simple deck of playing cards. And then at the top, you have another one that's a pretty similar size, it's a little bit longer. I also wanna call out the orientation of these zippers. I think it works well with this flap as it's typically something that might hang down. It would be annoying to have the zipper at the bottom and potentially have the items falling. So here I can just unzip and grab what I need easily. And in this compartment, I just stored a tin that has some band-aids and ointments. And then I also have a little manicure set. And then moving into this larger area, this is actually separated into two sections. You have this clip here, which holds a divider in place. And this is meant to separate some of your maybe gym and work items. In my case, I actually use this as a sleeve to hold my tablet. I have my iPad mini in here. And then I also have a moleskin notebook. I felt like a really good size for those types of items and I grabbed them a little bit more regularly. So I liked having this separate compartment for them. But this is actually a pretty deep area so this might also be a good spot for maybe some flatter shoes or sandals if you're going to the gym and you need something to change afterwards you might be able to squeeze it in here i don't think i could fit running shoes into this sleeve in particular but also maybe a change of clothes so like having the separation there and the fact that this clips and just keeps it out of the way from this larger area which is a fantastic space particularly if you have bulkier items or if you're like me and you like to pack in pouches um, it's able to handle that very nicely. So diving into what I currently have are my Beat Studio wireless headphones. And then I also have this GORUCK field pouch that has uh, just some of the bulkier items that I might carry with me. And I also have the Evergood Civic Access pouch, which is one of my favorites to use, particularly while working remote. I have the Air Slim pouch, which has more of my tech and EDC items. And then the last pouch that I have down here near the bottom is actually the Bellroy Desk Caddy, which is something that I've been testing out recently. If you want to see a full review on this, let me know in the comments below. I don't always carry quite as many pouches as what I have here, but I wanted to show off the space and how much this bag could hold. The last item that I have in here at the moment, of course, is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a feel for the volume of this compartment. I really like how much it comes up. That's what allows it to handle bulkier items and pouches so easily. And it's also gonna allow it to work well as a minimal travel bag. So I could definitely see myself tossing in a packing cube, an extra pair of shoes, a dop kit, and being able to use this for a longer weekend trip. 
And then the last thing that we're going to take a look at in this compartment is the laptop sleeve here on the back, which is a padded sleeve. It's not super thick, not quite as padded as some of the other laptop sleeves that we've looked at recently, but it still feels like it's gonna offer some protection from anything else that's in this compartment. I like that this is actually suspended off the bottom of the ground, so if you you know, drop your laptop in a little bit harder, or you place your bag down on the ground, your device should be protected. This is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. So pulling my device out, now with the sleeve empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No sort of fleece lining, which I was sad to see because the Raven series of the bags do actually have a fleece lining and the sleeve is a little bit thicker, so I wish that they had carried that over. But the compartment still comes up a decent amount. If you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. And again, with the padding that's offered and the fact that it's suspended, it still feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. So a nice implementation in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag, it really offers plenty of space. I like the simplicity of the bag, the comfort that it offers. And if you're looking for something that has a little bit more of an outdoorsy vibe that's well built and it's gonna work in a variety of situations, then this is gonna be a solid option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Fjall Raven Ovo 30 backpack over the past couple of weeks. And you can currently purchase this on the company site or Amazon for about $130, which to me feels like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and the build quality that it has to offer. And it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Raven 28, which is also from Fjall Raven. I really love the more kind of heritage style aesthetic of that bag and the organizational layout. It just has awesome pocketing all throughout. You can really organize everything that you might need to carry with you. At 28 liters of space, it can hold a lot of stuff. This one's 30 liters, so it might not be able to hold quite as much, but it's very, very similar as far as capacity. It's very well built. I really like the laptop compartment that it has. It's gonna come in at a pretty similar price range. And one thing about that bag is it's not gonna be as breathable as this one. It doesn't have the same sort of back paneling. but if you're looking for something with kind of a more traditional look and some extra organization, that's gonna be a great option to consider. The next bag this made me think of is the North Face Caban, which we looked at pretty recently. That has a similar sort of top loading style to this. It's close in size as well. It comes in at 27 liters, so it might be a little bit smaller, but it has a very sleek aesthetic. It actually feels a little bit more modern and techy. Then this one is kind of just shinier as far as the materials, but it also feels like it's gonna have maybe a little bit of additional weather resistance. It comes with extra pocketing. You have a little bit more flexibility as far as how you can organize all of your stuff. Great protection for all of your devices. It has a luggage pass through. It's very comfortable to wear. So if you're a fan of the North Face's bags and you're looking for something like this, that's maybe just gonna have a slightly more modern look, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Osprey Arcane Daypack XL, which is another 30 liter bag. So it's similar in size to this, but it has a different organizational layout. It doesn't have the sort of bucket style opening. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Raven 28 from Fjall Raven, but it comes in at 30 liters of space. It can hold a ton of stuff. I really like the additional organizational options that that provides. It just has some extra compartments, it has a water bottle pocket. It's comfortable to wear. I think this one is maybe a little bit more comfortable with that bag does a great job. I really like the overall aesthetic of that one. The build quality is great. And if you're looking for something that has this sort of a look, but just a different organizational layout, or you're a big fan of Osprey's bags in particular, then that's going to be a fantastic option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CHZ 22 and 26. Both of those are fantastic and very simple all-purpose bags. I really love the build quality that they have. They have a similar top loading style opening. It's just a big bucket of space. You can stuff a ton of things into the bag. It has a suspended and well padded laptop sleeve. It's a pretty simple organizational layout, but the pockets that it does have are very effective. You get a ton of volume in them, so you can still organize all of your stuff. Evergoods has one of the most comfortable harness systems as well. They have those contoured shoulder straps that you know really just hug your back very nicely. The bag does come in at maybe a slightly higher price point, but if you have the budget for it and you're looking for something that's going to be ultra minimal as far as the aesthetics that's going to work well in a variety of environments and it's just going to give you a lot of space and that's going to be a great option to take a look at. With that being said, the Fjall Raven Olvo backpack holds up really well against those options and if you're looking for something durable and comfortable that's going to offer plenty of space and it's going to be a great option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Olvo backpack and how it compares to some of the other great daily bags that we've featured on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, 
As always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.